Okay, it's going live. I'll go live on Instagram. Go live. So it seems like I'm live on Instagram. Yes. Go live. That is hello, Instagram people. I got your message there. Okay, all good on your end to go live there? We're good, yep. All right, we are live. Welcome to the Maselli Show. Start my hair out fresh out of the shower. I'm going to have to start getting ready a couple hours earlier rather than just an hour earlier. Kind of funny. But you know what? It's time for a little Van Halen. say how good was that but every single time it's like the first time with that van halen you know how it is with great music it transcends time so speaking of music um 
This is the Maselli Show. I'm Paul Maselli. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Wet hair still. Sorry about that. It'll be nice and dry and puffy by the end of the show. And uh, got the cat over here keeping us company. And uh, I, I'm a world tour drummer from a band uh, called Dread Zeppelin. We did Led Zeppelin reggae with Elvis. And uh, that was a lot of fun. So one of my biggest inspirations, of course, is John Bonham. And Led Zeppelin. And uh, I'm going to have to let this play a little bit here. I'm going to share this tab to full screen. Have you ever heard the Led Zeppelin, How the West Was Won, the live show? You're going to hear a little bit of it right now. Moby Dick, anyway. Let's go. So I'll keep that in the background and chat a little bit. But we're going to get to some drum loops going on. Right there, man. Who likes Led Zeppelin? Anybody like Led Zeppelin out there? Woo! So Dread Zeppelin, I got to do John Bonham kind of stuff, but also with the reggae, for the upbeat, kind of like a Stuart Copeland. Listen to that. Okay, now we're going to... So anyway, I'm going to pull up some information here about a couple things. Well, here you go. Check it out. I mean, already that feel is amazing. Already, anybody try to duplicate the feel of that? He's swinging already just because he's playing. Beast. John Henry Bonham. Rocking the Moby Dick. It's funny in Dread Zeppelin, Tortelvis was our singer, and he would, being an Elvis impersonator, he would uh, kick me off the drums to do the Moby Dick. Dread Zeppelin would do Moby Dick. And uh, he would just do kind of a quick drum solo. That's pretty funny. But I'm gonna, I, I've got to work on this. I mean, to keep that going like that, and he's, he's creating. He's creating there as he's playing. Of course, he's done it enough times, he knows what he can create with. And that's what it is when you're, when you're playing music or drums, for example. You practice and practice your thing, but what kind of licks and things do you have in your bag of tricks that you can then bring out, kind of make your own and play them? And uh, I was listening to Stuart Copeland little interview on uh, Rick Beato's channel. I think I should get the video 
video for that. I don't know if they have video for this show, but um, certainly the song remains the same. Let me show the video. We're on video here. Um, but also, we're streaming live. And um, Gene over at Hamilton Radio, is who we're with, we're being aired by Hamilton Radio. And uh, he sent me over some links where people can listen. So let's see what we got. We got HamiltonRadio.net. Then there's iHeart.com. It looks like you'd look under Hamilton Radio. So I can post those links. If Gene, you want to post the links in our chat. I don't know if anybody's going to see them, but um, at least they're there. I can post them too. So Hamilton Radio. Yeah, we're on Alexa and Google. Hamilton Radio. Oldie. Roku under Live 365. As John Bonham is just beating the heck out of those drums. <laughs> turn that down a little bit all right cool oh yeah i got my glasses on sexy yeah so anyway i was saying about stuart copeland he was talking on the rick beato show the other day which rick beato has a channel and he's doing great things he's interviewing artists and he's critiquing or explaining music and music theory and stuff so thank you rick for all of that i watch your show all the time he's got great stuff on there uh, Stuart Copeland from The Police was on there talking about he doesn't play anything the same twice, you know, like always kind of creating. But he has requested, please play that lick that you do that everybody loves. And -da 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 -da, you know, different licks that he has that have become, you know, as we the listener listen, we like, oh, here comes that lick we all love. And if you don't play it, you know, you might disappoint. So. That's the thing. And then being live versus uh, recorded and all that. Van Halen is live and recording live. And that's the fun of live, too, is that uh, anything can happen. And Van Halen even left a few things in their recordings that weren't perfect. Well, that's a whole other subject. you got many artists that aren't perfect, uh, out of tune a little bit, but that's the human element, right? And that's what makes for the the feel too because if now we're like digitizing everything and making it perfect that's a different kind of creation i guess you know you can't say it's bad or find fault with it i mean you can find fault with it but you know i try to embrace the things you know like some people say oh i don't like pop music or those pop well it's popular for a reason one one reason or another and i certainly like to have more popularity with my music and anything else right so um but yeah let's see what we're gonna do with john henry bonham i'm gonna let him keep going he was gonna go to his, he's gonna go to his hands in a minute look he's already been going seven minutes that's impressive Skip on down what happens towards the end here. John Henry Bond. Wow, still going with us. 16 minutes. 16 and a half. <laughs> 17 and a half. Still just hit. Lays in a trail there.
John Henry Bono. Wow. How long does it take to end a song? It depends what band you're listening to. <laughs> that took at least a minute. Led Zeppelin to do their ending there. I always loved the Van Halen endings too. I love everything Van Halen. So uh, I'm looking to get my own original thing going here. I'm in the Spokane, uh, where, where am I? I'm Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, near Spokane, Washington, here at my uh, sister and brother-in-law's place. Been out here. I'd like to show you the outside. We've got the forest, like literally right out here. What's going to happen with that? Deep this setting. And I'm going to make it so you can see outside. Get my virtual background. Take it off. Okay, here we are in the bedroom. Little Sully show. Rocking and rolling. Look at that. Is it doing it now? Let me see. I think it looks like it is. Yeah. Woo. So here, should we see the forest outside there? Look at that. Got a little American flag art there. Can you see that? Got the cat here. Hey, kitty. Lucky, lucky kitty sleeping away. So we got the forest. Living out here, foresty neighborhood. Back that way, we got the lake, Hayden Lake. No snow today. Snow was, we thought was about over in the spring and some rain and stuff. So right up that way, right up that way, I walk up the street and like a half a mile or so up there is a trail into the forest. Just like, for example, one of them. So this last night, even on my Facebook page, you can see I was walking into the forest and I found, oh, there was a stick, like a perfect like shepherd stick. <laughs> so I filmed that, put that on Facebook, of course. Got to film and show everything. And uh, so I'm walking in there, and it's just incredible. The peacefulness, the energy of the trees. So when I was in there before with my sister, somebody said, yeah, tree energy is the best. And it's true. By the way, um, I think we have a number of people can call in if they want to talk live. Or um, I can even send a link if somebody wants to uh, join in and chat a little bit. Um, I can't see all my channels all at the same time. Well, I can if I click around. But uh, let's see over here on the Facebook. Uh, well, you, actually, you can even text me at 727-678-9659. And uh, I can even have you on the phone. Um, and let's see, where would somebody be able to see this if I posted it? Because this is on StreamYard. So I'd have to post my, uh, oh, I could post it right here on the screen. That's right. I have an option for that. Um, so I'll work on that at some point. But walking in the forest up here is amazing. I'll be doing this after the show because I have to come back down to earth after doing something like this. Because for some reason, doing a show like this, you know, it's streaming out there and people can see it and critique it and you got to do your thing. I mean, this isn't a show like I'm used to do. Like, I'm used to going up and playing an instrument, right? So I'm talking through the instrument, whether it's the drums or the guitar or bass. I love playing bass, too. Um, now I'm doing some singing, doing the uh, the Elvis character. Oh, I heard mama said the way you move. Uh, in, like, a Dread Zeppelin setting. So um, it's a different kind of performance we got going here. This is talking. So, uh, you know, here we are talking to you. Got the cat over here, might want to chime in. And look what the cat does. You pet him, and he's like, okay, let's play. I got sharp claws. Check it out. Yeah, you do have sharp claws, buddy. How about I put a sweater on or something so you don't pierce my skin? <laughs> I was at the doctor, and he said, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I got the cat scratching me over here. It was my own fault because I kind of let him and play with him. And but he's this this cat's like that. Do any of you have a cat that likes to scratch? I mean, that's what we got the post for too, right? The scratching post and that kind of thing. So we got one in the living room who got a <laughs> Oh yeah, isn't that right, Kitty? Oh yes. You want to come over here and be on the show? Well, we could just put you on anyway. Look, he, he's he's rearing his beautiful head. Hey, Kitty, say hi. 
Lucky kitty. Can you see? Hey, now. Wait, don't bother me. I'm not eating. I'm sleeping. You know the phrase. Don't bother me. I'm eating. Or don't bother me. I'm sleeping. Okay, so we got walking in the forest, and I was in there a couple, two, three weeks ago, and there was one of the trees. I mean, there's a ton of beautiful trees and trees that have fallen and all this nature stuff. It's just unbelievably peaceful, and I'm thinking, where's the live creature? You know, because we also have deer running around here and turkeys. Yeah. Just last night, I'm out walking, and the deer's are this way and that way, and then the turkeys. Come, 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 come. <laughs> Imagine you're walking like, come, 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 come. <laughs> isn't that right, kitty cat? And you walk back in the house, and the cat goes, burr, 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 right? you know, play with me now. So anyway, uh, one of the trees has fallen over out there, of many, and that at the base of it, it's uh, from a distance. Whoa, that looks like a cub, a bear, a bear cub. So I'd like. Uh, I'm gonna look around here for a second, make sure the mama mama bear is not around. And uh, I'm sure you can hear me; otherwise, you'd have told me, right, Gene? Yeah. Okay. Good. I don't see my gauge going up and down, but maybe I'm looking in the wrong spot. As long as you can hear me. Um, so I'm looking around. You know, baby cub, uh, bear cub means mama cub somewhere nearby, but it wasn't a cub. So like, that's the base of the tree. Oh my god, I gotta film that, you know. So that's on my page somewhere and in my reels. Also on TikTok. Gotta use all the social media. Got the Facebook, the Instagram, the LinkedIn, the YouTube, the TikTok, uh, the Twitter, now X. Those are the major ones. And then uh, you got some of the other ones trying to chime in there. Um, so I filmed that and posted on most all of those and I'm filming, I'm walking over. It looks like a bear cub right till I get like a foot away. And then all of a sudden you see it's the bottom, it's a base of the tree that had fallen over. It was shaped like a bear cub. So that was interesting. So I filmed that and posted that up on all the social media. Cause why, what are we doing with the social media? We're trying to do something. Attract attention, be entertaining, post something of interest. Uh, like uh, Gary V, I'm not sure how to say his last name. Is it Vander Check? Not Vanderbilt. No, I think he's a Vanderbilt. That's one of the, that's a whole other subject right there. One of the major families. He, Vander Check. I think it's Gary Vander, Gary V, they call him. Like, yeah, you got free advertising these days. So, and everything comes back to marketing. Every single thing I'm doing or do, uh, guess what? Even this show needs marketing. So, hey, I got this new thing I'm doing. Okay, I got a band. I got a show. I got a product I'm selling. Needs marketing. Needs marketing. And um, so utilizing all that social media is a, a great way to market because it's all free right now. Uh, you can get into the paid ads, and apparently that's where uh, you can strike gold even more. I mean, we can post things and try to go viral, and that's, you know, that certainly happens and can happen. But uh, let's see what else we got from the Van Halen boys over here about going viral. Do they have something about that? I'm pretty sure they must. Oh, I know what it is.
Yeah, get an eruption and go viral on social media, right? Here we go. Gotta have a little You Really Got Me, baby. Come on. Oh, somebody give me a knock this. Hey, what's going on? That's right. If you go viral and have an eruption, you might need a doctor. Miley Cyrus has a new song out, something about that. She's killing it. That's her own. Where she uh, goes to Grammy and got the, uh, the by herself flowers. You know how it is. You uh, might get a little lonely sometimes. Buy yourself some flowers. You walk through things for you. But she's got that other song out now. Uh, I want to reshare that one. It's pretty good. Pretty, pretty, good, pretty good. I like it. She's doing a bit of a Tina Turner thing. She's got the kind of the outfit and, and the look and the grooming and the attitude. Cool. Okay. Somebody give her a doctor. Yeah. So I'm wearing. Uh, one of the shirts from my sons, they're Walking Dead. And I'm not really familiar with the show because I kind of more watch comedies, romantic comedies, things to kind of lift my spirit. Because, I, you know, things that are more violent and, you know, it's like Prince said, what you put in, you're going to get out kind of thing, right? So I think The Walking Dead is uh, probably something along the uh, more drama <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, somebody could fill me in. But my son loves the shirt. But I got it for him. So they're called hand-me-ups. When your kids are giving you those clothes they don't want to wear anymore, they're, they're hand-me-ups. That's what I call them. They yeah, got me some hand-me-ups. But listen, I felt like I was The Walking Dead. For decades off and on you know it's like always been like a challenge you know with fatigue and so forth so how I ended up out here in my sister's place is because I had a awful fatigue issue and um, so here it really got me so I'm saying Let's see. Eruption again? How about that? Oh, I see. They're playing it at the beginning of You Really Got Me. So I'll just go let that play. They want that. Can't get enough Eddie, right? So I had this horrible fatigue issue plaguing me. It was kind of getting worse and worse over the years. Cause I'm kind of high energy also like, uh, you know, being a drummer and a performer, you spend energy and then you need to eat and all this kind of stuff. So come to find out I shouldn't be doing uh, the gluten and the sugar and the dairy. But it really got me. You know what I'm saying? So you get the idea. See, I hate to turn it down because great part of the song's coming, so let's go.
So I was telling Gene from Hamilton Radio the other day when we started the show last week. We do this all day long, man. I mean, just playing favorite music and talking about certain subjects. Look at Big Alex on there rocking. So I got some Van Halen stories. Like, oh, there's so much to talk about. I was in a band with Michael Anthony's younger brother. Michael Anthony is the bass player right there from Van Halen. And he lived in Arcadia. And I grew up in Arcadia. So I ended up, I was in a band with his younger brother back in junior high. And we got to go backstage. I was like, what was that? 14 years old. I got to go backstage and meet Van Halen, man. Whether I was dead or alive, I had just gotten my wisdom teeth pulled. Um, is that right? I think the lower one. Yeah, my sister was asking me about that the other day. I just got my lower wisdom teeth out. It was an operation, so I was on meds. <laughs> and I uh, got to go backstage. We went in a limo for Michael Anthony's house. Um, what venue was it? I don't know if it was Coliseum or something like that. There were a lot of great bands playing. So we took our little pad and got the autographs. Met David Lee Roth. Sitting there, he was talking to a reporter saying, yeah, we got the lights and the stage and everything. How you doing, man? Get, get you an autograph? What's your name? And he writes, and I still have it. I've posted it on my Facebook page. Like every year it comes up, you know, and I'll post it. He's all, all right, Paul. Oh, there's a star find his name like wow this guy's bigger than life you know then there was uh got alex and michael's autograph then eddie was over talking to rick nielsen from cheap trick so i walked over there and then um, didn't want to interrupt him but i i did because i wanted an autograph so eddie get your autograph yeah and he wrote something cool too Look out for Paul, I think he wrote. I mean, that's cool, isn't it? Like, to take the time and do something like that. And take an extra couple couple of words, make it memorable and special. And then um, I didn't know Rick Nielsen very well or his work with Cheap Trick yet at that point. But I said, hey, can I get your autograph too? You know, just, you know. Seemed like the right thing to do. <laughs> so you don't want to be like, okay, see ya. So I got out of two and come to find out, wow, Rick is really great. And all the cheap trick stuff and the double neck. Wait a minute. How many neck guitar does he have? Doesn't he have a multiple neck? I got, I'll have to look at it. He's got a bunch of necks. And then Bunny Carlos is a crack up. got that little cigarette hanging out, playing the drums there. But I got more into Cheap Trick as I heard them more at some of the parties and stuff back in junior high and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's one Van Halen story. It's not even complete. And we went out to the front and watched one. And, oh, and Alex said he was going to give me some drumsticks, but I never did get to get those. I wonder how Alex is doing these days, you know? Because without your brother that you grew up with and bandmate that you created music with, that has just got to be one of the worst things to have happened. But, you know, it is a part of life, uh, passing away and, and death and all that. So we've got to seize the moments, right? Every day is a present. you got to be in the present. So, oh, and Van Halen's playing Dead or Alive here. Right? I'm playing. Yeah. What would be good next? Pick one, anyone, huh? I kind of like, we played this the other night. Yeah, tonight away. Hey, 
Well, I tried to play it anyway. You know? Ah, yeah. a little rusty there on that. One. Especially when he gets into the tapping stuff, we'll have to turn that up and get into the tap tap. Yeah, that's where you can see what's kind of coming up here. Yeah, so we went out uh, to this place. What's it called? These? Shout out to Cruisers. Cruisers in a place called Post Falls. We call it near the state line. So I'm here. This is Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. French name. I forget the meaning right now. I think it has something to do with an angel. And then uh, we're overlooking Hayden Lake. And then uh, you got Spokane over uh, half an hour or so. And then um, we went over there and played a little bit. They have an open jam over there on Wednesdays at the Red Room. I was over there. So I got all this video editing to do now. Because they had video that they recorded, multi angles. So I was playing some drums, and then I went out and played some guitar. We did a few songs. I take it to another song, another song, and mix it up. Singing, too. So I've gotten into some singing because uh, there's not always a singer there. And um, also trying to be the front man for my own version of Dread Zeppelin, calling it Fresh Zeppelin. Oh, got to listen to this. Eddie. Good, huh? With Michael Anthony. So great. Such a good guy. Nice guy. And the, the high singing part there, playing the bass. A uh, very important part of the sound from that first Van Halen. Well, all the Van Halen up until uh, Wolfgang, Wolfie came in. So, you know, there's another controversial subject. Some people voice their opinions about that. You know, the fact in life is nothing stays the same. Everything changes. It's either going to get better or it's going to get worse. So it's up to us to appreciate the beautiful girls in this world. You know what I'm saying? She was a seaside sitting, just a smoking and a drinking on ringside. On top of the world, oh yeah. She had a drink in her hand, she had a toes in the sand. Oh, wow, <laughs> what a beautiful girl, oh ah, yeah. What a sweet talk, now you will live in a bit of a good job in your head and mouth. Reach from the sea with the looks to be like she liked to fool around. What a snappy little man. Gonna keep up happy, happy, and accompany me to the ends of the earth. Ah, yeah, that's why I said, Here I am, they know when I'm the one. All I need is the beautiful. I'm in the sun and he's having fun. And Mr. Roth went on to do his uh, California Girls and all that. Yeah. So everything can be controversial, right? But nothing stays the same. So my point of view needs to be all right. Got to embrace change and um, do what we can with it. I mean, even the fact that I said beautiful girls. Uh, <laughs> people can be offended these days, apparently. So here, more solo. Sit down right here. Ooh, 
There's a lot of fun in their music. You know, Ultimate Party Band, I think uh, some might call it. It's humor, you know, having fun. Maybe always smiling. Michael up there putting on a show. That's what it's about. Putting on the show, getting into it. We went to um, a place called The Knitting Factory here in Spokane Saturday night and saw a uh, female ACDC tribute band called Hell's Bell. And my friend Joe, Joe G, he was uh, opening up with his band called The Mojo Band. And uh, thanks for the invite, Joe G. But um, in Hell's Bell, they were, the, the, the girl that was doing the Angus Young part, she was really selling it. She was doing like Angus Young and really rocking it out. And we could appreciate that. And it was interesting. Um, last time they were there, I think there were 1,200 people, but this time it was a um, convention for somebody and they didn't market it that well. So it was like maybe 20 to 40 people. <laughs> so we had our own private show, basically. But it was cool. We had a great time. Then um, walked down the street, went over to the Red Room. Talk to them about bringing in my 70s disco band because this room would be a gold mine in Los Angeles. Streaming to Instagram. If you ended, I didn't do that. No. Should be cool over there. What's the matter? Here? What's some Panama? Um, yeah, so we got the open jams at the Red Room on Wednesday now. We might book some shows. I'm looking around back to marketing, trying to book my disco band. I got my version of Dread Zeppelin where I'm being the Elvis up front. I call myself the Selvis. And we got some video of that around too. But man, time just flies when you're doing your own show and talking a lot of stuff. <laughs> and um, I'm going to need a walk, come back down after this. It's getting used to, you know, and there's a lot of controls here. And I got. Um, Thanks to Gene. Gene posted Gene from Hamilton Radio .net. He posted uh, something a couple weeks ago about hey, anybody want to have their own show? And how did that connection happen? Well, that's because I was marketing. I was marketing my song, my new pop rock song, Sweet Lips. So I was looking around for places to play it. And um, guess what? It all came back to again marketing, marketing, marketing. So I was paying somebody, um, I think that's Stephen Foster over there with um, this marketing machine, helping people get on indie radio and stuff. I think that's how I connected with Gene. No, maybe Gene came from Easy Way also, maybe, or maybe both. It could have been a double angled thing. Um, Easy Way uh, is pretty cool. We'll talk more about that at some point as well. Um, and so Gene plays our song, Sweet Lips, which maybe I ought to bring that up also. There's just so much going on over here. <laughs> and then, so we became friends on Facebook. And then uh, he posted about anybody want to do their own show. And now that I've got my health all improved and back, um, I have the energy now to do this. Uh, I'm back in action. Let me pause that. And I'll be ready for that in a minute. Get a Sweet Lips coming at you in a second. And Sweet Lips, uh, appreciate it, Gene. Uh, he been playing it on HamiltonRadio.net. And then now he's got me on here uh, having my own radio show. And the time was right. It's like, Yes, it's been on my to-do list for years. I've had the page up in the Selly show, I've been wanting to do a variety show and, and market my thing. So this is great. Now we just need to get some eyeballs, some more eyeballs, right? So I'm here to promote me and all the things I like and I do with Gene and Hamilton Radio. Then we can have guests and sponsors. And all this takes money. All it takes money, right? To market and promote. We've got to break through. All of us, we're all marketing, promoting something, whether 
positive or negative, but we're trying to sell something. Somebody's got to be marketing and promoting it. That's where we get into the paid ads. So we're about to hit Panama at the end here. Cool. Yeah, so I'm going to head over here to show you some of the sweet lips. So I flew Mary Ann Vanderhorst. Well, let me back up a second. A little sweet lip story is, I'm going to share this tab. Now you got that showing. You can see Rick Beato over here. Okay, but I'm just going to put that full screen. See, I'm getting to know my way around here on my own show. Um, so it's always been on my to-do list, of course, to do original songs. I've got plenty of rock songs, but I also like pop. And I like with the female vocals. So, but any time I pick up the guitar, you know, you start playing something, you think, oh, that could sound good in a song. You know, so like uh, play a little D and then went down here. I didn't even know what chord this was, but it um, ends up being some kind of a C. And then I hit a wrong one. I said, oh, those sound good together. I was up one string too many. Oh, that would be a cool song. So I just laid down a beat and then uh, put the bass and uh, said, hmm, it sounds a little bit like a Beatles part in here. Um, I, I can tell you where that was. Uh, goes down and then love you more. I was hearing that like from the Beatles, but we didn't get put that in the song because you could you can get into infinite creations. However, you want to do a song, right? Go this way or that way. Um, from here, it looks like my camera's frozen. I hope it's not. Um, but in any way, as long as you can still hear me. Oh, here we go. We're back. Um, so I, I got those two chords. I laid down the basic tracks. And then I said, oh, it sounds like I need to put some leads on here. So the leads version, uh, I don't know if I have that on Facebook. But we can play that some other time because we're running out of time here in a little bit. Unless I find it. I was looking around for a singer. Who can help me write this song? So, uh, I found someone to help co-write it and paid them a little bit to help write the song. And then get this, um, it was, that, was, that was like the most fun almost I've ever had um, collaborating with someone. And uh, bouncing the ideas back and forth. But they didn't want to get, like, you know, if the song goes, but they just wanted to be paid the upfront part, and, did, and that was it. It's like, okay, well, I guess I'm finding a new performance singer. So I uh, looked around and promoted all over the place and marketing, marketing, and found uh, Marianne Vanderhorst. Uh, she did very well on X Factor. She sang Halo by Beyonce. You can look it up. Um, Halo, Beyonce, X Factor. It's got like 23 million views. And um, so I shot uh, Marianne a message and she responded and I sent her over the, the track and she did it and she sent it back. I'm like, okay. So thinking high and mighty, flew her in uh, to do the recording of it. And uh, with a, a friend of mine, co producer, I found we were doing some uh, actor uh, background work. On a show, and I met him. Oh, the producer that knows what he's doing, um, Paris Alexander. And so we went over there and started re recording it all, and flew Marianne in, and uh, uh, he put his producer uh, touch on there. So it looks like I might be a little froze here. Let's see. Let's see. I'll just keep talking in case it's still going. But um, heading back over here, we're going to play a little Sweet Lips. My camera. Could be my internet connection. I don't know. Let me, I'm going to go look over here on my phone, see what's happening. Are we still live? Are we still live? 
Yep, still live. That's good. Some people can't view your post because.